So I wanted to show you something today that I thought is just hopefully pretty encouraging and pretty exciting. And so right now I'm building this HTTP course for uh, boot.dev, boot.dev slash prime, by the way. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I wanted to go through and be able to mark up this RFC in Vim to be able to make sure that during the course, I can actually pull you back directly to the RFC, not simply referencing some book you might have to buy or anything like that, but actually just just pointing you to the authoritative source. And so what I came up with is this idea of being able to lay markers down. And so I can do like say the request line or chunked encoding and be able to mark up the document for all the most important items. And then not only that, but to also be able to have like little teeny tiny notes that can pop up right there. So I can actually transfer to the next one and then I can bring up the note, I can read it, do that, do whatever I need to do with that information. And then just make sure it's in both my course and in the little HTTP, HTTP HTTP document that I have right here and then I could either release the note along with my little annotations on top of it or even better when I am done with the course and I've covered each one of the points I want to make sure that I have linked officially into the source I can delete these little flags and so I decided I wanted to build it and I wanted to build it today so I spent about three ish hours building out this plugin on Twitch live on Twitch screaming and sliding across the keyboard boys we were locked in okay some people think they're locked Locked in, okay, but we were officially locked in. And so let me show you two things. One, this is all the setup code that I need for it. I just wanted to add these little remaps right here, right? So I could add a, something under my cursor. I could remove something under my cursor. I could show notes. I could navigate to next and I could navigate to next and show the notes at the exact same time. I thought that was pretty nice. Um, there you go. So that's like all the setup really is. So I called it RFC, uh, RFCs nuts and it really all it is is going to be 280 lines of code for like the actual highlight code and the saving to the file system code and then about 102 lines for the actual API I kept the API pretty simple right you can add you can remove you can remove all of them you can add under cursor and just provide the text instead of asking for say this little input prompt right here um, and you can also just nav to the next one you can show notes and you can show next nav to the next and show it and that's it pretty simple API, right? What I think is pretty cool is just how easy it is to work with the file system in Vim. So right here, you'll notice that immediately, I ensure that the directory exists. So that way inside of our data directory, inside of like XDG data or wherever you store your data, I actually have a folder called RFCs. And then inside of that, I make sure that I can actually create this file inside of that directory. And instead of having some crazy naming scheme or trying to name the file, the file that you're marking name in inside this RFCs instead trying to be a little bit more clever right just hashing it that way hopefully the hashes are a little bit different between projects and we don't cause anything wild to happen and there we go we don't have any collisions there could be a collision at some point but I hope not and now all I have to do is just read and write to that data so every single time you update your highlights I can just save it right away to the file or to the disk because if you think about it I'm only gonna be saving what at most 10 20 marks it's going to take a millisecond or two you're not even going to notice it and so that way the project always is in sync and you don't have any of those dumb problems where you have just like this constant competition between the two sources or you try to not write to the disk the entire time and just write to it once so that way it feels creamy smooth to the user just because you're writing so much data but then you end up having like a crash or something and you lose all of that data in between just some awful stuff that happens and i built this thing literally as dumb as i could like as dumb as I can it just simply has a highlighting class right here pretty straightforward and all I do is I can get the cursor right I just get my current cursor and find a highlight underneath that if I'm doing any sort of like removing from cursor or showing notes or anything like that adding is pretty simple just get the current position get the current position call it the line add the text then I sort it just to make sure I have them always in order so that way when you navigate next it navigates to the correct one next uh, removing from cursor pretty easy find everything underneath the cursor and then just remove it from the table right pretty straightforward navigate next exact same thing get your current line and then set your set the first one as the nearest start on number two and if we find one that's technically near and ahead of us then we go to that one that way in case you're off the edge all the way down off the document you want to wrap all the way back up to the first one kind of a weird little fun problem to solve I didn't think I I didn't think it was gonna be as complicated as it was and it's pretty easy but it was just complicated enough to make it kind of annoying show notes all that other stuff you pretty much get the idea it's pretty much straightforward stuff and i just wanted to take the time to show you this and the reason why i wanted to show you this is that 
This isn't hard to make. It took a couple hours, and I'm decently familiar with the API. I would not call myself an expert in any sense of the word, but I just simply know enough Vim to be able to do this. And this is one of those things where I keep talking about the value of knowing your tools. I had a problem. I just wanted it solved the way I wanted it solved. I didn't want to have to change my behavior to conform to some other tool. Instead, in my 100-hour, 200-hour project I'll be spending building, I spent three hours to create something that I will use pretty frequently and I'll solve the problem the exact way I wanted to solve it just for me it's for nobody else I'll push this code up onto github so you can go check it out in fact I think I have it right here there you go uh, yay it's right here nothing nothing really that crazy about it if I am pretty sure I can go like this get status add this get commit uh, hello uh, from YouTube there you go Beautiful, latest code out there. And now you can go and check this out. Just threw it up there. If you want to kind of learn a little bit about running stuff inside of Lou or inside of NeoVim, pretty great. I even do a little bit of testing. Look at this. I even do a little bit of testing. How nice is that? Do make sure that I just have some nice little highlighting and adding from cursor and all that. That it just works the way I would hope it would work. Anyways, I really do hope that what you get out of this little kind of talking video isn't me trying to show you a bunch of stuff about Vim. I don't care if you use Vim. What I hope you get out of this video is that you have the power to solve all of your problems. A little bit of effort, a little bit of experience goes a long way. So instead of just being so deeply tied to one thing, you can make your own if you find it uncomfortable. If you find things you don't like, make your own. It's that simple and honestly, it feels really good. So I hope you appreciate that. Hey, if you like these kind of talks, again, I'm just trying something new. You know, I'm just trying to I'm just trying to connect with the people. Uh, if you like these, hey, press the sub button, press the like button. It does help me leave a comment if you've ever done something like this. And lastly, uh, clearly name your first kid after me. You know, really appreciate me. The, uh, I think there's not enough of those out there, you know. Uh, you can name it after my last name, of course, which is Primogen, would be pretty great. And also, if you just like this kind of content, let me know. Like, do you want me to keep doing this? I did it once, and you guys liked it. So I'm just going to keep on swinging out for the, you know, out for the shores, and maybe this works out. Maybe it doesn't. But I'm liking it.